This video is part two of systems applications. One very common problem is to talk about money. So if I were to think about the difference between number of items and value of items, if I want to know the number of nickels, usually we don't know that when they start with the problem, so I would call it n. And if I wanted to know the value of a nickel, the value of a nickel is 0 0.05, 5 cents. And then the total value would be the 5 cents times the number of coins that we had that were nickels. If I wanted to know dimes, I don't know how many dimes I have. Its value is 0 0.10, and the total value would be 0 0.10 times the number of dimes that I have. So if I wanted to write an equation, I actually would have um, totals down here would help me write my equations. And I would total here, I would have the total number of coins. And then I could just say n plus d is equal to the number of coins. And here I would have the value or total value of the coins. And then that, if I just add these two, I would have that equal to the total value of my coins. Now we've got our money problem that we started out thinking about. Thomas has a collection of coins consisting of nickels and dimes. He has 50 coins total, and they total 450. How many nickels and dimes are in his collection? Well, what are the two different things that we're trying to, that we're discussing in here? We're discussing nickels and dimes. So that's what our items are. Okay, we put our nickels and dimes under the item because that's the two things we see that they're talking about. And did they tell us how many of e either one we have? The only thing they told us was that we had 50 t coins. So that would be the total amount of coins. And they did tell us that the total value was 450. So that would be our, down here in our total row. And we're gonna say that's 450 but we still have some things to fill in. We need to know how many, that's what they're asking us to find. So those are our unknowns. We don't know how many nickels and we don't know how many dimes. But we do know their values. The value for a nickel again is 0 0.05 and a value for a dime is 0 0.10. So again, remember that it's amount times the value is equal to the total. So we could say that we have 0.05n and we have 0.10d and now we have two equations. And if we read those equations, remember we said that we could read them up and down or left and right. So n plus d would be equal to 50. And over here, this equation is going to give us 0.05n plus 0.10d equal to 4 0.50, which is what I have here. So again, we could do substitution, we could do elimination. Elimination is even the least likely of all the problems we've done. Elimination would not be the easiest of this problem because we've got all these decimals in here. So I would do substitution again. It doesn't really matter whether we substitute for n or we substitute for d. It might be a little easier to distribute the point 0.1, but not necessarily but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna solve for D. So if I solve for D, I'm gonna subtract N from this side and that leaves me with D and subtract N from the 50, leaving me with 50 minus N. So plugging into my bottom equation, I have 0 0.05 and I have N because that's the variable I'm gonna work with, plus and then 0.1, remember I don't have to carry the zero along times the 50, let's put that in blue, 50 minus n, and then that'll be equal to 4.5. Zero if you really want the zero, but again, you don't have to have the zero. So 0 0.05n plus 0.1, remember you just move the decimal one place, so instead of 50, it becomes five, and then minus, when I distribute to the negative n, it's minus 0.1n equal to our 4.5. Combining my like terms, I'm going to have 0 0.05 minus a 0.1. We have negative 0.05n plus 5 
is equal to 4.5. And if we subtract 5 from both sides, now we have negative 0.05n equal to negative 0.5. And if we divide by negative 0.05, and divide by negative 0 0.05. That's a decimal in there. Let's see. Point, my fault. Negative 0.5 divided by negative 0 0.05 gives us n being equal to 10. And remember, that means 10 nickels. I now know how many nickels. I have to plug that into my top equation up here. So d is equal to 50 minus that 10. So that tells us that we have d equal to 40. So I can't remember who he was, but he has. <laughs> he has 10 nickels and 40 dimes, at least. So let's look at this one. Admission to a football game is $5 for students, $8 for general admission. If 700 tickets are sold and $5,000 is collected, how many student tickets and general admission tickets are sold? So first we have to decide what our variables are. What are the two items that we're talking about? And the items that we're talking about are student tickets and general admission tickets. So we'll call this student and I'll call this gen add, general admission. And I'm gonna let, it tells me that I have a total of 700 tickets collected, but I don't know how many of each. But I'm gonna plug in what I know. I know there's 700 total, and I know that the $5,000 is collected, so that's a total amount of money or a total value. And now I just have to fill in everything else that I don't know. So what's the amount of the student tickets? It doesn't say. It just tells me that they're sold for $5. So I know this, this is a value. So that's a $5 value. And general admissions are $8 in value. And now I'm ready to talk about how many student tickets. They didn't tell me. So I have to let that be a variable. And how many general admission tickets? I don't know, they didn't tell me, so I'll let it be a variable. And now, one more time, amount times the value is equal to the total value. So this would be 5S and 8G. If I take the number of tickets that I sell for students and multiply that times five, and add to that, the number of general admission tickets times $8 for each one, I should get a total of $5,000. And if I take those total number of student tickets plus the total number of general admission tickets, there should be 700 of them. So S plus G is 700, 5S plus 8G is 5,000, which is what we have here. So we've done substitution twice. Let's try elimination. And I'm going to multiply the bottom equation because it's smaller numbers, and I'm going to multiply it by negative 5. 5 is a little bit smaller, might be a little bit easier to work with, maybe, maybe not. But I'm going to say I want to multiply by negative 5. So my new system is the top equation stays the same, and then I have to change the bottom equation. Distributing the 5, that becomes a negative 5s and minus 5g and 700 times negative 5 would be negative 3,500. So my S's cancel out. 8G plus a negative 5G will be 3G. And 5,000 minus 3,500 should be 1,500. But just to be careful, I'm going to say 5,000 here minus 3,500 to double check that I'm right. And I am. So we divide by 3 to get to G, and G is going to be equal to 500. So 500 general admission tickets were sold. How many student? 
Well, we have to go back into a, one of our originals, but this original right here has very nice coefficients of 1. So S plus my G that I now know is 500 is supposed to be equal to 700. And if I subtract my 500 from both sides, then I find out that S is equal to 200. And we just say that there, um, we could say 200 student and 500 general admission tickets were sold.